All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. It looks like most people have joined. Again, welcome and thank you for joining our webinar today. We're going to be discussing some of the things we think can revolutionize your field service operations and provide you a 360 degree approach by using what we refer to as a modern ERP. Administratively, the presentation is going to take about 45 minutes. We're going to leave some time open at the end for some questions. So your phone lines will be muted during the presentation. And if anyone has questions, please feel free in the toolbar to type your questions in the questions box. And at the end of the presentation, we will be addressing your questions as well as fielding any additional questions that may come up. My name is Daniel Edwards. I am the practice director for the NetSuite business unit here at Net at Work. And I'm joined by one of my Oracle colleagues, Ryan Tate. He is a solutions engineer on their field service management team. And we are going to be showing you how, again, you can use a modern ERP to revolutionize your field service operations. So first and foremost, what do we consider field service? And I think it boils down to, it's about getting the right person with the right skills, parts, and tools to the right place at the right time to service your customers. And that means different things in different industries. Field service is a very broad industry vertical that has many, many, many sub verticals that we could discuss specific details. But in a broad context, it's all about dispatching technicians or contractors or, or employees to locations to repair or maintain or install something in the field. And some of the common pain points we hear from our clients who are using our field service solution, as well as prospective clients, first and foremost is scheduling because planning is everything when it comes to field service. Uh, one of the biggest headaches is actually the planning, whether you're using Excel spreadsheets or an antiquated system or a system that doesn't tie into the rest of your organization for example, with the next bullet point of managing your customers. Managing your customers means knowing your customers, and you can't know your customers if everything isn't tied into a single solution. Using point solutions for CRM and back office ERP and field service and inventory management worked at a certain point, but having everything under one roof in a modern ERP is going to make all the difference in the world, and we're going to show you that today. Technician time tracking is another issue because time is money, especially with some organizations that it may be a time and materials project. It may not just be break fix or an installation or preventive maintenance. It may be something that is a time material and we need to be able to track our technicians time. Even if it's not time materials, we need to track the technician time for many reasons beyond billing. Um, it, time is money. And that ties into, you know, how do we get the service tickets to our technician? Is it paper-based? Do we have a mobile device that they can pull up all of their tasks? Can we track them in real time? Where are they with a the job if we have something come up that's an emergent break fix that needs to be scheduled? How do we know who's available and who's closest? And how do we get them that service ticket to be able to service our customers as soon as possible? And finally, reporting and analyzing how can I improve service? What can I do within my, within my control to give it a better customer experience to maximize knowing my customer so that I can serve them better in the future and get that repeat business? Because at the end of the day, getting the invoicing and to the customer, taking care of everything, cash is king in this business. We need to make sure we're managing all of these different aspects because when we look at the macro sense, there's been an evolving market in the field service vertical for at least the past decade. I know anecdotally uh, in the Atlanta market where I lived uh, until recently, there's a lot of organizations that you, before you had an HVAC company and maybe an electrical company and some other mechanical service. Now, like for, for plumbing, for example, now you see HVAC companies that are saying we provide HVAC, electrical, and plumbing. A lot of those field service organizations where you're looking at consumer field service, and in some instances, the commercial side of the vertical, there's some consolidation because 
there's a workforce shortage. This was brought to uh, the attention uh, by folks like uh, Mike Rowe and others who are saying there's going to be a workforce shortage coming up. COVID-19 didn't help the situation, but we're giving, we're getting, we're hearing clients say that there's just more demand from customers to respond faster, to be more accurate, to be quicker with the repair, and have a high level of customer service. So we're noticing that our clients are needing to do more with less. And in order to do that, it's it helps to systematize some of these processes that we've been discussing. So we have a workforce shortage. How can we enable our workforce to use technology so that we can do more with fewer resources that we have available? So specifically today, we're going to be talking about the field service management platform in Oracle NetSuite. And there are six major components that we like to discuss when we're talking about um, the field service platform. So we look at the scheduling board uh, and we're going to go into the product a little bit later to talk about some of these in a little bit more detail. But we have a scheduling board because we said scheduling is everything. and We're going to talk about how that can be pushed to the mobile app, how we can manage assets in the field, how we can manage inventory, our preventive maintenance, and then again, what is the billing and contract management? So all of this is falling under the umbrella of the field service management um, within NetSuite. So when we look at the product overview, there's some specific areas we're going to be touching upon. The schedule board, the mobile app, asset management, a little bit of inventory, a little bit of job management. And we want to just give you the broad stroke overview of what the application can do. And we will be having future webinars where we're going to be talking about some of these topics in more detail. For example, uh, we plan on having a webinar specifically on scheduling specifically on using the mobile app and asset management. So we're going to get into more detail, but this initial webinar is to kick things off and to give us a broad overview of what the application can do. So specifically with the scheduling board, we feel as though it's the best in class board because it makes it really easy for service managers to manage a large workforce in the field. Uh, it's very user friendly, so drag and drop. Uh, onto the scheduling board. You can see that we have uh, geolocation. So there's specifically uh, for real-time scheduling, we can see um, the map here, uh, specifically in Australia, uh, flexible job creation and intelligent work uh, allocation, which uh, we can talk about a little bit, just essentially who's available with the specific skill set that we need um, for this particular job that we can schedule on the fly and send that information to their mobile device. This is just a quick view of the interface of the scheduling board, which again, we can get into a little bit more detail here shortly, um, where we can see the visibility of resources. You see here on the left-hand pane, we see all of our field technicians. We can also have filters where we can say, well, we want to see a resource with this specific skill set, for example. We have the flexible calendar with the time zones. And we can expand the job details as needed. So not only can we see it visually, but if we need to get additional detail, this visual scheduler really gives us a lot of information. And again, since it's drag and drop, a lot of flexibility, but a lot of ease of use. It really takes a lot of the complexity out of scheduling. So push all that to our mobile app where we can have custom checklists. You can see here is an example of this information being pushed to the mobile app and the information that the field technician can see. Specifically, apologize, specifically, um, it's built for the technician. So 
we want to get them the information they need without overloading them with information. So you can see that there's site details, who are the contacts, are there any files that they need to see? What is the scope of work that they're supposed to be there doing? And you can see um, there's a description of what they're supposed to be doing. There you can see that there's the address, the date, and the time of the appointment. And at the end, you'll notice that this says field sales, field sales and data evidence capture. This is um, where the field service technician can actually, for example, snap a photo with their mobile device. And that, that gets added to the ticket. So you can say, hey, look, I, I charged the uh, Freon in your HVAC and, and here's, or I repaired the hose and here's a photo of the repair that I made or the preventive maintenance um, that I conducted. That can be captured all in the field. So again, ease of scheduling, pushing the information necessary to the technician on their mobile app and allowing the technician the autonomy to be able to track their time, track their expense, capture the, the evidence that they need in the field, and even invoice. They can capture signatures in the field, a lot of information. So again, we are pushing some of that manual process that we've been doing in the past with paper or spreadsheets or an antiquated system. That's all being systematized, which again is allowing us to do more with less. We can also manage the equipment that we have in the field. We have clients that are in medical device manufacturing, for example, and they need to be able to see the full visibility of those assets like MRI machines in the field uh, because there's a lot of safety and compliance that goes with that uh, particular type of equipment. They need to make sure they're keeping up on all the governance for the assets that they're managing, uh, which also comes into play with asset life cycle. What is the asset history? Can I have multiple assets on a single job? Um, and that just keeps the customer informed with the information that we can push for customer consumption on that full asset visibility, not only for the installation, for the maintenance and the break fix, but also the entire asset life cycle uh, for that particular client. And you'll see here where we have the multiple assets on a single job. So real quick, we're just gonna walk through this, not in grave detail, but this gives you a good overview of the flow in NetSuite's field service management solution. So we can add thing, add items onto a sales order. So for example, if it's an installation, uh, let's, let's stick with the theme of HVAC, you're buying a new, um, uh, air conditioning unit for your home in Norcross, Georgia. Uh, I can put that on the sales order that I can fulfill the items, but then I can also have a project that is an installation. That installation can be scheduled with our dispatching and our scheduling tool. It can be scheduled and dispatched, assigned to a resource that can go into the field and do that installation for the client at the scheduled time. That can also be billed once that service has been fulfilled and then that particular asset is put under a preventive maintenance plan so that in the future if the client buys a specific plan or the customer buys a specific maintenance plan we can incorporate that into our process so that we come out once a year again and and check the freon you know clean the fan blades all of the stuff that would be preventive maintenance under a specific plan and that just goes on and on to show uh, that whole life cycle of how we go from initial sale to installation to preventive maintenance to break fix under warranty repair to be able to manage all the aspects of this particular field service client. So break fix service call, uh, we have within the NetSuite solution, there is um, a customer support piece that client can call in, customer can call in, there's an issue, they can email, there's an issue. We would create that job for a specific asset to create the task that we can then schedule in our scheduler, assign it to a resource and dispatch them with, again, the right skills, parts and tools available to go on site with the geolocation that's built into the solution to ensure 
that the customer is getting prompt service, quick repair, uh, you know, some of those things that we saw in an earlier slide about the ever evolving marketplace, this is what we're delivering. We are delivering what we would consider a top notch customer experience with the field service management solution within NetSuite, again, going from initial contact all the way through preventive maintenance and support. So real quick, we're gonna jump into a product demonstration. I just wanna see if my colleague Ryan was able to join. I am here, hey Daniel. Can you hear me? Hey Daniel. So I'm gonna to try to make you a presenter real quick, Ryan. I can hear you, Ryan. Apologize just a second, having a little technical difficulty. Okay, I think we're good. I'm gonna make you a presenter, Ryan. Are you good? I believe so. I believe you should be seeing my screen okay and can you hear me okay? I can't hear the audio, so that may be on my end. And Tony, can Jordan and Derek, can you hear Ryan just confirming? Yeah, I can hear Ryan just fine. Perfect. Excellent. Well, I will walk through our, our demonstration here for us. So first off, just taking a look at, at our, our NetSuite and looking at our dashboards, looking at our key performance indicators that are related to our, our service scenarios there for us uh, to to go through. So being able to include those metrics whenever we're looking at any of our dashboards, any of our reminders and being able to see that. As we start looking at our customers and what assets they have and what we're going to service, let's go ahead and take a look at a customer record. So in this place, the, the same customer record we're used to using inside of NetSuite, but really looking at things from a, a field service perspective and being able to have our assets. In my particular scenario, I have things set up as side assets. So where the location, where we're going to have all of our equipment and things we're servicing at, and then our equipment assets themselves for us. And I can create preventive maintenance, warranties, service orders, and cases against any of these at any level. We could even have sub assets underneath that. For example, a production line at a, a particular site that has sub pieces of that production line with different warranties or different preventive maintenance schedules that we wanna track separately as well. As we go ahead and we look at those things, let's go ahead and look at one of our equipment assets. We're going to be able to see exactly where it's at so we get uh, down to the latitude and longitude of where things are located. Being able to see if we have any warranties or past history of what service orders have we done or, or work tickets uh, for us. Being able to look at those past maintenance records, including any pictures or signatures or, or anything else we've taken about that uh, uh, for us. So we, uh, for, for today's demonstration, I'm gonna go ahead and start with a brand new asset that doesn't have any uh, cases or tasks here for us. This asset was actually sold and installed through our sales order so we can see when this was shipped out that automatically created the asset for us in here so we don't have to remember to go ahead and do that if we sell something to a customer and we mark it as a field service asset let's have that automatically be created against their record pulling in the serial number that we shipped if that item has a serial number uh, for us as well it would look very uh, uh similar to this sales order here that i have an air conditioner we're going to go sell some labor for the install that, that we want to go ahead and manage but first, as we go ahead and we take a look at these assets <coughs> uh, for us, we may have an issue. A customer calls up, we need to do something against this. So I'm going to create a service order. Now service order is what I'm calling it in my system, but we can call this a work ticket or whatever makes sense for, for the way you do business with your customers. So we can keep the same verbiage you're used to and all, all those kind of good things. So now as we look at this service order, we're gonna first try to diagnose the issue see if we can solve things, maybe use our knowledge base as part of our standard case management in NetSuite. Uh, but ultimately we determine somebody needs to go ahead and go on site. So let's go ahead and fill out a few pieces of information. I'm just putting in my, my contact I'm speaking with. In this case, this item is under warranty. So I want to select that warranty that's going to um, create our projects here for us and, and what we need to have. Put in a little details, what's going on? AC unit is not cooling and it is making a noise 
for example. So ultimately, I could fill in other pieces of information as we go forward. Uh, but in this case, let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and say we want to send somebody on outside for, for that service. While I'm looking at this, we have our, our site visit, but we may be doing other visits. We could use this to schedule sales visits or, or delivery of assets. Maybe somebody drops off the asset, marks it as delivered and shipped to the customer, and then an install key team is dispatched after that. So it allows for multiple workflow activities, and you can bring in what types of visits you're doing and control what we see on the mobile device based upon those types of visits. Additionally, I may need a certain level of skills. For example, we're doing an AC unit that's on top of a roof, so I need somebody who's okay to work at heights. And this will allow me to filter that out when we schedule to see who has those appropriate skill levels and who can do the session that we're working for. So that way the technician that we dispatch and send on site is actually able to perform that task and we can use that as a filter. We want to give them a little bit of uh, information as well. So this can go on the mobile device, can go in the dispatcher, so we can go ahead and see that. Let's say, you know, in this case, we're just gonna go out there from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. and we're gonna add that, that visit. Now I may schedule others. I may have assigned it to somebody, but I'm gonna go ahead and let my, my scheduling, my dispatch board figure that out for me. So now we've saved that service order and this is going to be something that we want to, to go ahead and schedule here in a moment. In addition to that, we may have, as Daniel uh, mentioned in our, our workflows here for us, we may have preventive maintenance activities or we may have installation activities. If we go back to that sales order, this is a good example of that installation. We have that. As soon as I either ship this or we put it on the truck to go take it on site for us, we want to be able to have that information ready to go for me and, and be able to take a look at uh, for us. Additionally, I have and I'm using our, our project functionality to control what tasks need to happen while we are on site and what our schedule is. Now, in my case, we're just doing an AC installation for four hours, we're, we're managing that with a task, but we may have more uh, complex things. We may have other things that we may need to do before we get to the point of installing it. For example, we may have all the order of the materials, all the production, uh, we may have R&D work or getting permits, things that may not belong in the field service side, but that equipment installation, this piece here is gonna be the piece that I want to schedule with field service but we're utilizing all the rest of native NetSuite project functionality to go ahead and, and, and do our works just as we normally were doing today if we were already using our projects. I can still look at my Gantt chart and we can start to see the, the length of time where all the other stuff is happening versus that installation activity that we want to go ahead and have happen with our project. So those will be scheduled there for us to do as well. I know on August 10th through August 15th, we're going to have a, a task uh, for us to go ahead and do as well, uh, to, to go ahead and mess with. In addition to that, we may have preventive maintenance. So we'll also use our projects for this. In this case, I have preventive maintenance set up at a monthly level for us. And it's against the actual location itself, or it maybe against individual assets. This particular AC unit has a preventive maintenance schedule that's different than another AC unit. Or you know what, we're going to go on site to all of these at the same time and go ahead and uh, uh, service them all. So that, that, that contract, that preventive maintenance contract is going to be for everything. Since it's monthly, I don't have to remember to schedule all those service tickets. I'm going here for, for a year, actually a year and a day uh, for us. So that has scheduled all of my monthly tasks and cases that we need to go ahead and manage to get on site for, uh, for us. But let's say we want to go ahead and change that. You know what? I'm not doing monthly. I'm going to be doing a quarterly or or, or biannually or other tasks there for us. So we can go ahead and make those changes. That's gonna automatically update my cases for me. The system's gonna automatically delete the cases it no longer needs, update everything here for us. So we don't have to remember to do those other things. We tell us what our task is going to be about and, and what we're going to do, what our maintenance schedule is and have the system do everything else for us and create it. We don't want duplicate entry or, or making things, uh, uh, having to do different things there for us. To, to go ahead and manage. So now we, we've seen the ability to, to take this particular asset. We have scheduled that case for it, that service order to go ahead and do that break fix, that repair of that item. So we're gonna come back to this after we finish things in the mobile side. We've seen our projects where we can have our installation and, and how that works with our sales orders to have everything all in that one single source of the truth. And we've seen our preventive maintenance projects here for us. So all these are leading to things that we want to go ahead and schedule and dispatch and we want our technicians out in the field to be able to use our mobile device to go ahead and action on. So now let's go ahead and take a look at our scheduler uh, for us. 
So now as we see the scheduler, we'll see a lot of different colors and, and different areas. Here is my service team uh, for me. And what we're looking at, we can see our service team here. And I have a filter down into my region in, in the Mountain West. Rather than seeing the Gantt chart with everything, we can also see that on a map level as well. Where are my technicians? My Mountain West happens to be the Denver area. I can hover over and I can see any technicians that are there, where they're at, utilizing uh, whenever they're in the mobile device, we'll be able to track their location. If we want, there's areas you can turn that off if we want some privacy and such there for you as well. But we can make sure we know where they're at, as well as where our cases are. Where do we need to send our technicians? So here I have an installation that needs to happen. It already has Lorenzo assigned to it. It's going to be happening here in the future on the 26th, this Friday. So we would have Lorenzo going on to it. And I don't know if that's Lorenzo, but we'd be able to see that and say, yep, that's the right person there for us. But ultimately, we could be managing multiple teams uh, across uh, the country. So having multiple cases, multiple areas, or even all around the world. So you can separate your teams and be able to see exactly what makes sense for you. If we come back on over to our Gantt chart here for us. Now we see all the areas that are automatically scheduled here for me. Uh, however, I may want to filter things out. Now I'm seeing all my technicians in the Mountain West, but I also remember that I needed to see those folks who are working at heights. Who were those folks who can go up and, and repair that AC unit that's at the top there for us? So now I'm using that as a secondary filter. We're just seeing those folks. You can see folks who are scheduled for productive work. You'll also notice that Dexter here is on PTO for the week. So in their employee record, I can mark them as on PTO or anything else like that, and, and make sure that that's noted in the calendar. This person is not available here for that period of time uh, to go ahead and see. Now we have our people worked out the way we want to. Catherine is going to be the person I'm going to happen to schedule. We have that break fix that we just have done and set up here for us so that AC unit's not cooling, it's making the noise, and I just want to simply go ahead and drag and drop and move this right on uh, to, to go ahead and work. So I can certainly drag and drop. It's going to honor that time. We can have shortcut keys if you know what, I want to change the time and say, you know what, maybe we can go a little earlier, a little later uh, for it, or, or uh, you know, we can't do it today, let's go ahead and do it tomorrow uh, for us. So we're scheduling that through and, and making that work. Additionally, let's say we need uh, multiple folks. I don't just need Julius here for this. I need to have another person. So here in this case, we can go ahead and we can establish a team. And I'm going to establish that team to have these three folks who are all scheduled to run that same task. This is going to be your main individual, but all three of them will be able to interact with it on their mobile device and be able to see that. Additionally, in real time, you'll notice I move things around and, and rescheduled and resequenced things. Based upon this schedule, this is not going to happen on the time I originally scheduled it. So it's got the little red circle in there. It's highlighting and immediately giving us a visual indicator that things are not going according to plan. You may also be wondering what these colors are for. I can adjust the priority or status, and I can adjust what those colors mean. So right now I have the, my high, medium, and low priority. Maybe I want to see status if they're in progress or they're traveling on site. Maybe I want to see what things are installation versus preventive maintenance versus repairs. So it gives you the tools at a visual glance. We can see quickly exactly what everybody's doing and, and where they're at uh, for us. Additionally, I'm not going ahead and updating all the service cases and assigning all these tasks as I'm moving things around. I may be dragging and dropping these plans for a little bit. So only when I'm ready will I go ahead and save and sync that on up. I'm also looking at a five-day calendar. So I can look at seven days or 31. I can go right here and say, you know what, I want to see what's going on on the 30th and pivot right to that particular area there for us as well. So it gives us a lot of visual controls to ultimately make sure we are scheduling the folks who are closest and where those things need to be um, <coughs> as we uh, – Go through, but we have our plan. We've scheduled our folks uh, for us. I'm going to just change that color code back because we're going to come back to this in just a moment. We're going to see this Denver Aquarium site that we're about to work on uh, change some status once we finish it with the mobile site. So now we've seen all our different cases there for us. I may also want a, a technician to be notified. So here we can see a site visit that's been scheduled for them to, to go ahead and, and do those uh, activities so they can get an email. You can certainly see it right there on the mobile device. And let's go ahead and do that right now. So here I'm on my, my mobile device. We can see uh, some things for the 25th, the 26th, the 22nd here. We will notice there's nothing for the 23rd, nothing that we scheduled actually today. Uh, that's because this device on the mobile side, we may not always be in internet connectivity. So I can run in a disconnected state whenever I am not near an internet or, or cell coverage or anything else like that. 
and I can go ahead and I can refresh and whatever's cached on the device, I can go ahead and use. I can update all these mobile tickets there for us. And then once we get that that internet connectivity, that cell service, we can update everything back to, to the rest of NetSuite uh, for us. But we have our, our Denver Aquarium here for us. It's a site visit. We have some other pieces that are going on, some different site visits. I may have some other uh, appointments there for us, but let's go ahead and say we're, we're on our way there. Maybe we are there. I, I can travel here and it's going to give us uh, the real time directions of, of where we're going to go uh, for it and, and let me know what we're looking for uh, here. In this case, I think if I move this out a little bit further, I want to go ahead and uh, it'll give me those mapping directions and, and tell me exactly where we want things to go uh, for us as well. But first, oh, and the reason it's not is because I clicked on the wrong one. I want to go to this one that is uh, going for it, uh, for it. Uh, so once I have that for us, we can go ahead and clock in or start this and let us know when things are going. Now, it may not just be active labor. I may also want to tell, you know what, I'm traveling. I'm on my way there. I'm, I'm traveling. When's that time happening? We may charge for travel and bill it, or we may want to know the cost of that compared to what we're getting from a revenue standpoint with our customers. Maybe it's under warranty, so we just want to know the costs. Nothing's going to be revenue for us, but maybe it's all revenue. So we're going to start that activity, and we're going to say, you know what, I, I clocked in 1130 uh, for us to give us a little bit more time. I can now look at other pieces of information, uh, asset details, and see the, the item. I can update the location if we figure out it's at a different site or, or update other pieces of information. Now I'm looking at a fresh asset, but if I had past history, I can see all the other service appointments, everything else that's gone on with this particular piece of equipment. Now you'll notice that there's a couple items that are grayed out, and then there's one here that has a red star for this. So these are all examples of different checklists you can configure. Based upon the task type of site visit, I have different checklists I may want to perform. So if we look at this JSA, this job safety assessment uh, here for us, I've made some mandatory fields. I have to fill this out in order to progress along with my service ticket. I can't finish this until I've done these things. So you know what, I'm gonna fill this out. Yep, I was safe and follow the rules. I'm gonna check myself off on that. And I'm gonna give myself a signature to sign off that says I've done it. And all of these details are gonna go back to my service order recreated. So we have uh, immediate access for those when, when we need them. Now you'll also notice that that job status, since I've finished this one, we're now the next mandatory field. But I have other things that may happen. For example, I may wanna fill out a ma uh, maintenance record. Maybe I have some pictures that are mandatory in certain stages, or I just have some optional. So I'm gonna go right on in, select my photos and, and go through this. If I'm on my mobile device, uh, we'll pick up our camera and go ahead and work with that. You know, we, we, we passed with our safety checks there for us. So I can fill out that off, optional information, but I don't need to fill out the rest right now. So I can configure what information is mandatory, what's nice to have, what, what do I want to have as placeholders in case I need, need to fill it out. Additionally, Catherine here works in the service truck and has a truck of inventory that they may want to, to have. So I can load any inventory that's in their truck for us. In this case, we need to replace an air filter. So it's in my van, so it's configured and tied to that person versus you know, maybe I have uh, other pieces of inventory. And you know what, other than that air filter, we also needed to put in a new pump uh, there for us. So let's go ahead and bring in that pump, bring things through. I can see quantity available and, and such there for us. So I have these two line items there. Now, if I'm connected to internet and I'm not running cached and, and disconnected on the mobile, the moment I hit save here, it's actually going back to, to the rest of NetSuite and creating that sales order. It's updating the inventory and marking it as fulfilled so we can update the inventory of your vans and your service trucks. What inventory is on there? We're automatically taking it off by doing this. It's also automatically looking at any billing efforts, if it was under warranty or not, and it's going to, to create that there for you automatically. Same thing with expenses. You know, we had a parking fee or, or something of that that we wanted to put in there. It was $20 and, and we're just gonna say it was a parking fee. And I also want you to attach the, the receipt there for part of those expenses. And this will go fill out expenses directly in NetSuite uh, there for us. So again, making sure those same things are happening uh, when and where we need them to happen as we're walking through. Now I may have other things I need to do, or you know what, something happened, we need to go back I want the ability to schedule a follow-up task so I can select a follow-up task or they were talking to me. They said they want to buy another sales unit, uh, another AC unit. So let's schedule a sales visit for somebody to talk to them or at least notify sales what's going on so we can take action on it. 
now as I keep working, we're wrapping up our service here for us. I'm going to say that I replaced the pump and the filter. So I'm filling out the last bit of my manual fields here that I need to fill out, my mandatory fields. Now, some of these may be uh, different reasons. So if there was job completed, you'll notice it changes to close case. If I do more to do, there's a non-executed reason. So there's different follow-ons depending on the response that you do. But we're completed. We can close this case. We're all done uh, with it. Now that I've done that, my job completion and signatures can happen uh, there for us. So we, we spoke at the aquarium to Sydney Seal there. And we're going to fill out our nice, lovely signature there. Sign off those. And now that those are done, we finished all of our mandatory fields. I'm now available to complete my task. So we're making sure and ensuring those things that we have determined are mandatory for our field technicians to do are actually being done. Before I finish that off, though, I'm just going to end my current activity. I was logged in for 10 minutes, but it's going to bill 20, uh, a quarter of an hour because we bill in 15 minute increments as part of my setup. So we can make sure all that. And that's going to automatically go and create a time bill against this service area. And then we can go ahead and complete that. But before we do that, just as a note, we haven't completed that activity yet, but we sold those uh, items. We took them off the truck. I happen to have a workflow that sends an email of saying, here's what we just built for you or, or, or used for you as part of our service. So we can see that even before we have finished our activities. So very much real time and interacting with the rest of NetSuite to make sure we, we don't have to have any duplicate entry and we can always have that single source of the truth. So we completed our, our appointment here for us. So now that that's completed, once this updates, this is going to turn uh, in gray here for me. I'm just going to give that a second to, to turn through that. We can see our service order here. Um, let me just go ahead and reset that and refresh that because we've done a few things. We have that sales order as transactions. We have that job safety assessment where I have the details and the signature. We have the maintenance record with the photos that we took. Therefore, we have those time bills. Now some other pieces of automation. Let's say this is a billable event. I wanna bill the sales order, the time bills, any expenses, but I wanna have to go into each activity and invoice them automatically myself manually. I wanna generate this invoice and what that's going to do is combine all those activities together onto one sales order and one invoice there for you to, to go ahead and generate those for us. So it's gone ahead and done that. It's brought in the filter, the pump, and then we'll see the time bill will, will be there in a moment as well. Or also, I may want to have a service report for us. So this service report, maybe we want to automatically email this. As soon as we get that signature and we close the case, let's go ahead and bring that on out uh, for it. But now we have a configurable report. This is a, a simple template that we have that, that we can provide to you. Or more commonly, during implementation, we will tailor this to your needs. But we have those checklists that were done. We have the photos. We have the sign-offs, all that information. Maybe I want this automatically emailed off to my customer before I even left the site. So we can be very much real time and all on the same page. And lastly, I'll leave you with our uh, profitability report. So we'll be able to see that over time as we're servicing this asset. How much did we get when we sold it to them? How much did we get from all these different service activities? So we get a, a total profit of $497 on this piece of equipment, considering all of our preventive maintenance, service orders, break fixes, what was under warranty, what was not under warranty. We're combining it all and really knowing is what we're doing making money. Are, are, we, are we achieving the, the results that we want to achieve? And ultimately as well, bringing everybody up to date, that's automatically updated on the scheduling board. So our dispatchers and our schedulers and our, our supervisors in, in the office are all seeing that same single source of the truth. So that was a, a quick walkthrough of our service activities, starting with that, that break fix, Moving on into to installation and, and how we can manage multiple days of installation potentially or multiple different activities, as well as uh, the flexibility around uh, preventive maintenance. Then we saw how we could get into this dispatcher and scheduler and schedule our folks. And then we saw how easy it was to, to go ahead and utilize the mobile device, making sure everybody's on the same page and we're updating the rest of NetSuite all in real time. So we can see a nice area for, for your customers to get real time information, our technicians to get what they need quickly and easily on an easy to use mobile device and our dispatchers to get the information they need to correctly send the correct person to the correct place. So thank you uh, uh, for the time, and uh, I think we're going to uh, leave off for any questions that may be coming in here next. Hey, that was great, Ryan. Thank, thank you for that.
Yeah, thanks a lot, Ryan. That was awesome. Really appreciate it. So just to wrap things up, some of the things that Ryan discussed and we mentioned a little bit uh, during the presentation and we we'll spend a little bit of time on this is the fact that field service is just one piece of the solution. We want to leave you with this isn't a point solution. This is we have a unified platform that is extensible with low code. That's an important thing for today's ERP is a low code ERP that has financials and projects and lots of things built into the core product that the field service solution builds upon with that scheduler, the contracts, the break fix, the mobile device, which is amazing in my opinion that Ryan showed us. All of that ties into the system that is an end-to-end -end solution with CRM and on the back end uh, incorporating AI and machine learning and predictive analytics and things like that. This is what you're basically getting when you buy NetSuite field service solution. It really is an end-to-end -end solution from your core financials all the way through customer support. Um, and we can extend that with other applications if you need to integrate HR solutions, workflow solutions, all of this can be built into a single digital operating platform for your field service operations. So we'll wrap there. We've got about 15 minutes left. Uh, we want to leave some time open for questions if anyone has questions. And I'm going to just jump to the question board. Uh, there weren't any questions before, but I will give folks a little bit of time now in case they want to ask any questions. And uh, we'll just kind of leave it open to see uh, what we get coming in here. We'll give it a couple minutes. If nobody has any, we'll make it a wrap and give you guys a few minutes back. Okay, well, I don't see any questions coming across, so it uh, looks like we did a good job. And But if anyone does have any questions, we have some contact information here. Uh, you can always visit us at webinars at netatwork.com to see the additional information, <clears throat> excuse me, that we have available, uh, the different content. Again, we've had some webinars on AI that have been really good, and uh, where this is the first in the many of our field service uh, webinars that we're going to be presenting. And should you need to contact us, you can definitely contact us at webinars at netatwork.com. This is also my contact information should you have any questions. And we will be making a recording of this webinar available to all of the attendees. Again, thank you guys so much for your time. Ryan, thank you so much for showing the product for us today. Uh, really, really good job. And I hope everyone has a great rest of your day. Thank you.